What's up everybody, today we're going to talk about AnyWeb2. So what is AnyWeb2? Basically it's an app created by Magic Pro Ideas and it allows you to have a fake Google search so you can force an image on any chosen spectator. This can be done on your phone or the spectator's phone. Magic Pro Ideas presents AnyWeb2, the first gimmick Google. If you can Google it, you can force it. So how much does it cost? In the UK it's roughly £35, you can get it from a number of different websites and I think across the board it's roughly about that price. And essentially what you're buying is the product code to put in the app and all of the other details so you can use it. It's available on both iOS and Android so you can use it on any phone. So what do you get with AnyWeb2? So this is it here and as you can see here there's just a bit of cardboard in a poly pocket and you take it out and this is basically your AnyWeb2 details. So as you can see here, this is what it is. So it's anywhere to give it Google on their phones. It's multi-language and it can be used on Android and iOS and created by Magic Pro Ideas. So anywhere to is the first gimmick Google. You can force any image straight on the spectator's phone, movies or celebrities, places or anything. And basically it can be any image that's on the internet, you can force it. So this is the inside of the book and I'm just hiding this because that's the details of how to get in. You go onto the spectator's phone and you put in this specific link and you put in your pin code and that's how you access the gimmick Google. And again here it says watch and read the instructions inside the app which is very important because you need to know how it works and how you can do it. So here you can be able to force anything at all that you can Google straight on any borrowed phone. It's important how to use it and how to activate the secret area and access the different things that you can do with it. On the other side of the card it's got the QR code so you can scan it, download the app. It's also got your license code on there as well. So that's what you need to put into the app to activate your license and actually get to use AnyWeb2. So once you've downloaded the app, registered with your license code, you'll have the app on your phone and it'll be fully registered so you can do the amendments and stuff in there. So what is the routine or trick all about? Basically within AnyWeb2 you get nine different options that you can use. So you can set up nine different things that you can search for on the gimmick Google on the spectator's phone and able to force those nine different things. So a lot of them are already set up so you can have famous celebrities, you can have places, different things like that and you can also create your own as long as the image that you want to force on the spectator is on the internet. The way I've done it with my own images is you can upload an image to Twitter for example and you can get the image link from Twitter and then you can add that onto the app and then that's your forced image that you want to do. So again depending on your style of magic and what you're doing you can do a lot of things with this. You want to force on the spectator's phone so you can get the spectator's phone, get them to load up a blank browser for you and then you're going to say I'm going to go on Google so you pretend to type in Google but you actually type in the, the secret link that you use to get the gimmick Google. You then log in with your pin code and it's all done under the cover of you pretend to go on Google then you have the option here to select one of your nine options that you have built into any web for depending on whatever you want to force once you've selected that you can type in anything you want in Google and click search then basically what you want to do is go into images and you can show them that all of the images are completely different and you just get them to scroll through so the best way I found when forcing an image on spectators to get them to do the scrolling and the picking is basically you get them to hold the phone upside down you scroll up and down like this get them to scroll or you can scroll and then you pick an image while the phone is face down so when you reveal the phone upside down then that shows an image is on there like I said, there's nine different images that you can set up and they all can be personalized. So for example, if you're a wedding magician, what you can do is have an image of the couple on there as one of them. So you can say, we're gonna go on Google, gives you phone, we're gonna look for the best married couple this year. And you can have a look and there'll be loads of different couples. You get them to scroll through. When they pick it, it's a picture of them. And I think that's really, really captivating for something like that. And what I've done as well, there's a, a picture that I've got of me with some Nicolas Cage shorts. So I got the whole spiel of um, talking about famous celebrities and famous actors and stuff like that and asked them them what movies they're like, what actors they like and say oh my personal favourite is Nicolas Cage and talk about Gone in 60 Seconds and stuff like that and say it wouldn't be really bizarre if we were scrolling through here and the image that we picked was a picture of Nicolas Cage and obviously when you turn it around it's a picture of me having some Nicolas Cage shorts on and it just blows their mind because it's on their phone as a picture of you and yeah it's just mental. Does it come with the instructions? Yes, it does. It doesn't come with the instructions on the bit of cardboard here. However, in the app itself, there's a section on there at the bottom which is instructions. There's a video instruction on YouTube, and there's also a performance as well, and there's also a written instruction so you can scroll through and just read it at your own pace, and it tells you step by step exactly what to do and exactly how to set it up and do all those things. Is it easy to perform? Yes, very easy to perform. The only thing that you have to do is get the spectator's phone, log into your address, put your PIN code in, and then you follow the steps 
steps after that. Obviously you read the instructions and it tells you exactly what to do. First I was struggling because I didn't follow the instructions fully because it's something that you need to do before you actually force the image. So when you're looking on Google, it looks like a valid Google because you can click on different pictures, load them up, close them, that sort of thing. Then you have to do something after that. So when you click on another picture or anywhere on the screen, your force image comes up. In the beginning, I struggled with that because I didn't follow the instructions fully. So I highly recommend watching the instructions, watching the video all the way through, and then super, super easy to perform. So where can the magic be used? Like I said, it can be done anywhere at any time. As long as someone's got a phone, you can do it on their phone. You can do it on your own phone. However, a lot of people may suspect that it's a magic app and you're sort of using your phone to force the image, especially if it's going to be a picture of yourself or something like that. But if it's on the spectator's phone, it just blows them out of the water just because how unpredictable it is. So they would never expect a picture of you to come up on their phone in a Google search because they don't have any magic apps on nothing like that. It's just, as far as they can see, it just looks like Google. Because it's on the spectator's phone and it's something online, you need the internet or you need sort of service so it'll work on there. But again, it's super, super easy and very impromptu. You can do it with anyone's phone at any point, any time. Can you inspect the magic trick? Yes and no. So when you force the image on the spectator's phone, it comes up with their chosen image. And if you go back or click on the cross, it goes back to a normal Google search. However, if for example, the spectator looked in their history, it will come up with the web address of what you need to use to log in. Once you put that web address in, it'll just go back to a Google search page again. When you try to search in the Google search page, it won't work. So obviously that's where you're supposed to put your pin in. Can be inspected in one sense, but not in another sense. They might think something's a bit fishy with putting the, the web address in the history, but it doesn't show what you've used or anything like that. And if they try to replicate it, they can't do it. Is it well made? Yes, I think it is. The app itself is really easy to use. When you log in, it tells you the web address that you use and your unique pin code. So obviously you can log in with that and that's really, really easy to do. You also have your nine options that you can choose to create the, the force images. So you can pick whatever number you want and then you just have to remember what number refers to which force. So later down the line, you can do that. All you have to do then is go into that particular one, give it a title so you can remember it. And then you paste in the image link to what the image is you want to force save it all done in a matter of minutes you can change the image which you're going to force on any particular number and like i said earlier the great thing is when you're on google you don't have to remember what you typed in for the search result in any web you can type in anything you want as long as you've selected that particular number in the beginning setup it'll search for whatever you've searched and then force whatever image that you want. You don't have to remember, say, Nicolas Cage, Keith Fusco. You don't have to search for that. You can just put famous celebrities or you can put Gone in 60 Seconds. You can talk about the film and the cars and the actors and stuff like that. I can say favorite meme celebrity. Anything you want, you can put in. And then no matter what you choose, that will come up with your chosen image. So what's the positives? So it's really easy to use, like I said, it's really easy to update and to set up. When you're on the spectator's phone, it's really impromptu. You can grab their phone, you can log in, do all that straight away, super easy. So what's the negatives? Of course, having the option to log into a different website other than Google may be a bit suspicious. So when you take the spectator's phone, you're gonna to have to sort of talk to them as you're doing it in and rather than concentrate on it, just say, all right, well, I'm just gonna get this blank thing. I'm just gonna go on Google and then you type stuff in. So it looks like you're on Google trying to search for it and then putting a search in. So the way I do it is I've got the phone here. I log into the website while I'm talking, put the pin code in, and then start to type something, looking at the phone saying famous celebrities. And then once that's done, you can then show the spectator the phone because that comes up with a Google. So that's a negative. So if someone's at the side of you and you've got the phone, they might be looking thinking, well, he's not going on Google, just typing something else in. So the only negative is that you're gonna to have to sort of hide the phone while you log in. But if you've got a group of people in front of you and you're over here separate then, that's fine. The other negative that I found is that it relies on the spectator having the signal to actually go on the internet. Sometimes if the, the signal's a bit slow, it might take a while for the original page to load up, which you need to log into, which can be a bit frustrating. And I found sometimes when I've tried to go onto it, it's just come up with a blank page. So I've had to press refresh and then it loads up the Google page and I'm able to log in and do it that way. Apart from those two small negatives, then the rest is all positive for it. So for conclusion, I've been looking at it for quite a while and I was really tempted to get it, but I kept putting it off, putting it off, kept watching reviews and wasn't sure whether it was going to be something for me or whether it was going to be any good. It wasn't until I went to Blackpool and I saw it demoed live in person and just realized how how great it was and how powerful it can be used. So I just had to get it and then as soon as I've been 
sort of performing it, especially with the kids and different random people, has been really, really effective and it's just sort of really powerful, especially if you do, like I said, and produce a picture of yourself on their form when you're doing a Google search for anything random at all. It's just like, it's just super powerful how it just hits them and they're like, well, this is my phone. He's gone on Google, search for famous celebrities. The picture of him has come up when we've been scrolling. How is that even possible? And it's just blows and like I said for wedding magicians perfect you can have a picture of the wedding couple and you can do whatever you want to do it and then force that picture of the couple and then I think that would just just be perfect for it so these days there's more and more apps that you can download that are magic apps so you've got Cognito or Digital Force Bag and different stuff like that there's quite a lot of them that I've been getting and there's some of them that I want as well so in the future I'm going to be doing quite a lot more reviews on these app based magic things as well and I'm going to be putting a compilation together of the best magic apps that I think and do some detailed reviews on them and stuff like that so if that's something you're interested on then keep watching out on the channel and again if you like the video give it a like leave a comment below and subscribe until next time see ya